right YouTube, the Shadow King King Nazru, and we're going to do something a little bit different today. Today, I'm going to give my thoughts on Reboot, the Guardian Code. Now, for those of you who didn't grow up in the 90s or didn't catch the show online, Reboot was this was the first CGI uh, show, and it's considered a bit of a cult classic. It was basically a show about the sentient programs uh, taking place in the net, and if the main character was Bob, who was the Guardian uh, program, and he was friends with the likes of uh, Dot and uh, Enzo, and all, had all these other characters, and he would protect uh, Mainframe, which was basically, you know, a, basically a home computer, but it was uh, personified, not personified, and portrayed as like a city uh, from the likes of computer viruses. Now, the main antagonists that they usually had were uh, Megabyte, played by Tony J, God rest his soul. And uh, he was basically, basically just uh, a computer virus version of Hitler. Um, mixed with uh, some uh, just just imagine if you had like a British Hitler, to put it that way, and his uh sister sister Hexadecimal, who was uh this virus that was chaotic, and um had was a lot of had a lot of power. And they also, in the fourth season, introduced the virus Damon, who was a super virus, and she was basically like this uh, messianic figure. And all in all, it was a really good show. It uh, had a nice, well-developed characters, uh, balanced out comedy and drama. It made a lot of in-jokes about computer phrases, because... Which really made it effective was that a lot of people didn't know about uh, advanced computer stuff. They weren't tech savvy as they are today. So, but w once you do understand some of these things, you can actually have a better appreciation. Now, Guardian Co. takes place after uh, Reboot, but I'd I wouldn't exactly call it a sequel. It's it's kind of more along the veins of like Shaolin Chronicles, where it, it supposedly takes takes place after um, after the original Shaolin Showdown. But when you look at uh, some of the continuity errors, uh, it doesn't really exactly fit. Um, so uh, what I can basically say is that Reboot Guardian Code is basically. Reboot mixed with Code Lyoko. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, although it feels more like Code Lyoko than it does Reboot. And it basically focuses on these teenagers who get chosen because they were did very well in this game program called Guardian Code. And they're, they're the new, supposed to be the new generation of Guardians. And they be turn themselves into computer programs to fight off against viruses uh, from cyberspace, I mean attacking cyberspace, and their main enemy is uh, the sorcerer, but they mostly fight Megabyte uh, who's gotten this upgraded version. Though why they, though since he's supposed to be upgraded, when they go for calling him Terabyte now? I mean, that that's the highest form of, of uh, memory. Mm, but now, when I originally watched the trailer and saw that Re Reboot Guardians, uh, Guardian Co. was going to be more like Code Lyoko than Reboot, I was naturally, much like everybody else, very negative towards this change. Uh, I because Mostly because Reboot didn't have a, a proper conclusion. It ended with the return of uh, Megabyte, who gained the power of a Trojan horse virus, and was able to shapeshift a la Mystique. And he was had this plan there where he was going to start hunting down sprites and all that. 
Jazz, a bit of a spoiler warning there. Uh, but it doesn't be, seem to be following, following up on that storyline, at least not immediately, as it takes place, like, in present time, which is like 20 years or so after uh, Reboot ended. But apparently we're supposed to be getting some kind of uh, episode that's going to tell us what happened. Though, they're, considering that there's a bunch of continuity errors, I say don't expect too much from it. So, but I said, uh, said I was cautiously optimistic about this show. Or pessimistic as maybe, and I decided to watch the first ten episodes. Is that's all that's available right now? And honestly, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought these characters were going to be bland and annoying, especially since it's about high school drama, which is one of my least favorite types of entertainment genre. But the uh, the characters, they haven't exactly wowed me with their, with their characters, uh, but they're not as uh, annoying like an Eli, Eli Roth character, where they're just acting like a bunch of jackasses, and you could, you just feel the urge to just wrap your hands around their, their, their necks and just choke the life out of them. Uh, oh no, I have to say they're kind of... I don't want to say bland, but I say they still need a little bit uh, more development before I can uh, gnash my teeth into these characters, so per se. Um, so we got like four characters. Um, a leader type, uh, a stealth type, uh, an intellectual type, and the brawn type. And it's kind of like, has a very... Kalioko Power Rangers esque feel to it, and it also feels more like Tron. And then they also have this uh, artificial intelligence called Vera, who acts very robotic, which is odd because the programs in the original reboot series were capable of having uh, natural emotions. So why they decided to give one that didn't have emotions was weird. I guess that's probably something that was in Kalioko because personally, I I only watched like a couple of episodes of Kalioko when I I just can get into it. Uh, so I maybe maybe I am getting more attached to the show because it's slowly more to reboot. Uh, we could talk about. I guess we should talk about some of the villains. Um, the main villain technically is the sorcerer, who's basically this hacker guy. Who uh, does things to cause mayhem? Um, I'm. They haven't explained his goals overall, so I don't really know how to work with him. He just, I mean, he, he causes wreaks havoc. But he, I'm not entirely. Sure, but unless I get like a motivations from him, uh, he's kind of one dimensional. Uh, and he's basically controlling Megabyte. Uh, so it's going to be kind of like similar to the relationship between Unicron from and Megabyte, I mean Megatron from uh, Transformers. As for the Megabyte, now originally I didn't like his new design uh, because I felt a little worse than his original design, but it kind of I kind of gotten used to it by now. I, however, he is portrayed rather accurately, even though I don't like him being a minion. Though it does make sense for a user to have more power over a virus or any other computer program, as the users were interpreted by the pro by the uh, sentient programs to be like a like a god. So yeah, they you base so if they you cross, came across the user, it's basically like you were in the presence of a god or something. Uh, but yeah, they still kept that he's very egotistical, wants to conquer the net. Uh, they they given him like magic powers, which he was more, uh, well, not magic powers, but like magic esque powers. Um, which Megabyte didn't really have; he just had his claws and his intellect. Uh, powers was more his sister's uh forte, which hexadecimal. 
And yeah, a hexadecimal does appear in the uh, tenth episode, and they did fortunately get the original actress back, along with the uh, original voice actors for Bob and Doc. Uh, Enzo, I'm assuming, assuming they can get his voice actor back because she probably aged, or he aged. I, I don't know who who's his original voice actor was, but the person they got was pretty good enough. Uh, though we don't get much. Uh, time with du- with Bob and Dot and Enzo as they're in the tenth episode for like a brief time. And it's basically like, like a small cameo crossover. Uh, so far they're handling hexadecimal well, and but there I got some issues as when we last saw hexadecimal, she had become a good virus and uh tried to develop a romance between her and Bob. Uh, but uh, she had to sacrifice herself to stop the infection that Damon released. Uh, but now we have her back in back in how she originally was, with no explanation of how she's still alive. Uh, I've heard some theories that maybe this is like an alternate uh, mainframe, like the kind of like alternate universe. And so far, they haven't gotten to the point where the uh, classic reboot series has gotten. I mean, I suppose I would offer a good explanation and why uh, Bob and Hexadecimal's relationship isn't as far as it should be. Because if it was, we could have had Hexadecimal try to regain Bob's love and try be conflicted about joining uh, Megabyte again. Especially since she doesn't particularly like him. Since the one res- megabyte represents order and hexadecimal represents chaos. Uh, but we'll have to see l- later on how this goes. Uh, all in all, I don't think it's as bad as people say. It, but could have been a lot better if it had been a, a true continuation of Reboot. If they gotten some of the the original writers and creators of the original reboot to work on this and continue the storyline. Uh, but as is, it's, it's all right. I mean, I could still watch, watch this. Um, uh, I just say this is more like a show that if you got nothing better to watch. You can, uh, you can watch it. It'll be okay. Uh, just don't expect it to be like a, be like a true continuation of the uh, classic reboot. So all in all, not not as bad as I thought it'd be, but could have been better. Well, that's my thoughts on uh, reboot Guardian Code. I'll catch you guys later for another potential video.